the most experienced agents we see um, today have played about 200 years of StarCraft 2. Slightly. Th yeah. 200 <laughs> years yeah. of StarCraft 2. Yeah, it's a fun life. <laughs> I guess it is. I think John should start because <laughs> I, I he is, you yes, the best overview. Wow. Okay, well, to be the, the StarCraft Pro. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, the the original purpose of our thesis, or well, the uh, the thesis proposition, was made by one of the members of our group who's not here, unfortunately. Uh, so he created a proposition that uh, someone uh, was going to do a thesis surrounding StarCraft II specifically and machine learning in some way. I would also like to add what Arvid said about the DeepMind team that made the AlphaStorm uh, agents. They had their first public appearance showing their work like the, the first week that we were working on our bachelor. So it was incredibly relevant to, to our year, so to say. Welcome to the DeepMind headquarters in London. DeepMind is a world leader in artificial intelligence. They're widely known for their AlphaGo and AlphaZero AIs and applying their breakthroughs to scientific and medical problems. Uh, so their purpose, after we discussed it for a few weeks and we tried to continuously work on it, uh, became trying to see if we could create a classification system on game states uh, uh, of, for example, what buildings or what units plays controlled during different times of a, uh, of a game, and then see if we could create clusters of these meaningful clusters of, for example, strategies, then that's what they would became, become, so to say. Uh, so that became our thesis. If we could create these clusters, if we could create this classification and then make it into a classification problem that we could solve using machine learning techniques, so we could classify, given a new game, what type of cluster it would fit into. I think a general team theme for AI uh, being a difficult uh, area of research is that like generalizing things is always difficult to do. Uh, like the more general you want something to be, uh, the like time it takes to achieve that grows very fast. Uh, so I think it's always interesting to see if you have a problem, how that problem can be split into smaller sub problems, which then are solved more easily or efficiently. I, I think StarCraft no. like it represents a, a well-defined problem where you have to go from like discrete strategies in chess and go to a more continuous state space where you can do a bunch of different things, which like enhance the difficulty and appropriate amount amount. I'd say. I mean, if you um, if you consider all the possible data, possible game states in in a huge space where the further they are as, as points in a huge space and the further they are apart in how different they are in the game, the further they are apart in the space. Um, then a cluster is a group of these points where the games are similar in some way that we define. And we defined it as um, the number of buildings, number of units and researches that, are, that each player has right now. The reason why um, we wanted to look at these clusters specifically as well was that, uh, as Arid says, if we could have like one bot that is good against one each each cluster of games, for example, oh, uh, if a player does a cannon rush, it looks very similar to all other cannon rushes that have ever happened. And then we could have one agent that is very good against that specifically. And then we can have one overarching system that chooses which agent depending on how the game states look. And then we can tie it together with our regional clustering ideas. One major complication we had was that uh, we started trying to parse replay data. So we had thousands of replays and we wanted to get data out of them, which is basically just Excel files with, okay, at this time point, this player had these units and so on. Uh, the problem was that getting that data out of replays is harder than you might think. Uh, I know many people who are watching this or listening to this probably already knows, but the replays files of StarCraft 2 are incredibly bare bones. It's just the actions that players take which means that you can't just open up the replay files and get all that information. So we had to use parsing programs to get that information out of a replay file. The first program we used was called SC2 uh, Reader 
and it just reads the replay files and produces the, the data that we wanted to. Great. The problem was that uh, it could not handle player vision at all, which was an important part of our thesis. And uh, it also required replays to be filled completely. Uh, one issue that we uh, found was that the replays that we wanted to use, which was from the Blizzard official replay API, because Blizzard officially hosts tons of replays that you can just download, tons of them, they have been scraped even further. So those replays are even more bare bones than your normal everyday replay that you create yourself. So we couldn't use this very neat system, uh, the SC2 reader that we found online. So instead, uh, one of our uh, team members actually found someone else who were working on another project called SC2 Reaper. Uh, and that simulates the entire game. It runs the entire game engine it just plays the entire StarCraft game, but it saves all data that we want in the nice files. So the issue with this is that we had a we, we were forced to have a computer with with quite high end specs running 24 hours every day for two weeks to parse the replays that we wanted to. I think we landed we parsed probably 40,000 replays, and I think we used the top 10,000 of them in our actual like, thesis data because we wanted to have the more higher quality ones. Yeah, so I'd actually say that the, the result isn't the, the clustering itself or the, the cluster contents. The, uh, I view the, the results more like as the, the method itself that we use to arrive at the clusterings. So, I mean, you could choose, uh, we, had, we had some criteria on how to choose uh, cluster sizes and stuff like that. And so you could modify that to fit. Uh, our clusters that we got were the ones that uh, our algorithms or um, methods thought were the best best clusters but you could want you could make the clusters that you can make more of clusters so instead of having one uh, 60 percent of oh, these are the general strategies we can see okay well maybe in pvp there's a difference between robo openings and target openings but they are quite similar because they usually end up in the same mush anyways but if you go further down into the actual clusterings, then you can possibly see even more differences in the actual smaller sub parts of the clusters than what we have gotten in our final result, even if you're using the same data. You can see that there are multiple different colors that like go down like a tournament bracket almost. And depending on where you do the cutoff, you will get different amounts of clusters. So by just moving the cutoff further down, you will be able to get more uh, clusters and then have more different strategies or uh, game spaces or game state spaces. It could also be worth mentioning that improving the method generally uh, could probably lead to more well-defined clusters or an easier uh, easier strategies to identify um, within the clusters. Okay. And to further add on that, the, the classic answer in data science is always having more data. So if we were to have even more data, then we will be able to create more quality clusters, so to say, because then we'll have a bigger data source to create our clusters from. Blizzard could also potentially, theoretically, use our thesis, uh, the results of the thesis to not just balance the game, but also look at the game design to look uh, at how certain uh, strategies, how they are for example, too used uh, or how they separate themselves from the rest of the strategy space, so to say. So it could be used more of a metagame analysis, not for not specifically just for balance, but to see, for example, oh, all openings are basically the same except for this one opening. Then you can think of, okay, I mean, how do we separate the other openings or uh, how do we put more balance or more effort into making this specific opening more uh, attractive or not, and so on. So you could look at the game design of it more to promote different strategies instead of just specifically balance it. Well, I would like to see someone uh, attempt to use a similar methodology or our methodology. I mean, just develop it further and try different stuff because we, we restricted ourselves to a very specific like uh, cluster measures and clustering algorithm and stuff like that. But I'd like to see other people try other ways of measuring clusters and uh, finding clusters and see if it affects the, the clustering results in some way. And if so, how the clusters are different and how different metrics influence stuff like that to see like how robust the methodology is to, to uh, small changes. Uh, I think that uh, even if the the results of the thesis are not may not be impressive to DeepMind. 
um, they might still be happy to know that uh, there are, there's been work being done, even in even on a bachelor level and a master level, uh, in within StarCraft AI, that is yeah. at least partially inspired by DeepMind's work. How would you anticipate the results to look if you did all three races and their various matchups? That's a question for John. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know all the races. <laughs> <laughs> Zerg, wow. 